back in geological knowledge so as in the previous lecture we have discussed about the effects of the faulting and in which we have discussed the various types of effects relating to the effect on that effect of the dip faults or the effect of the stack slip fault or the effect of the faults on the folded strata or some other questions related to the effecting of faulting okay so in the this video we will discuss a very important topic that is related to the recognition of faulting means how the faults are recognized okay so let's start our discussion that deals with the recognition of the faulting so in that sequence the first question deals with the what is the criteria for a covered surface to be set a fault means if we have to call a covered surface a fault what are the criteria to be distinguished polished surface grooved surface striations or the polished surfaces grooves or the striations all the three so that is the option d is the right answer so an exposed or the covered or the exposed or the covered surface that may be suspected of being a faulted surface if it's polished carries grooves or the striations okay or we can call them the fault evidences as we can observe the fault plane evidences includes the minor structures which are found associated with the faulting system or the faults so they are observed in the immediate vicinity of fault planes and the most important structures if we talk about the most important fault plane fault plane evidences that are silicon slides drag for drags or the fault brexia gauze or the silicification and mineralization as well as the feather joints okay so some of them we have discussed already fault brexias or the gauze and we have also discussed about the myelonites okay so these are some very evidences very basic evidences of faulting system okay silicon slides we have also discussed and drags what happens in the drag fold or in dragging the in the immediate vicinity of a fault the end of a strata that may bend up and down okay the strata that the end of the strata that can be bended up or the down direction so the local bending which is caused by the fault displacement that is known as the drag and it indicates the direction of movement along a fault okay so our question was what is the criteria for a covered surface to be set a fault so that is the polished surface grooves as well as the striations so option d is the right answer next one is what is the reason for the abrupt termination in the previous lecture we have discussed about the evidences or the effects of faulting so there we have discussed that the abrupt termination but here is the question why the what is the reason behind the abrupt termination breaking of the strata into blocks movement of the disrupted blocks away from the each other or the breaking of strata into blocks and movement disrupted blocks away from each other one minute okay okay in b option there is movement and the c option there is the breaking of strata and third one is the movement of the disrupted blocks towards each other okay so options are very close okay they looks like very close and you have to answer it out that what is the very uh, basic reason behind the abrupt termination so that is the breaking of strata into blocks and movement of disrupted blocks away from each other due to faulting so a group of beds are some veins or dikes they may abruptly terminate along a surface in a given region so this may generally be due to the breaking of the strata into blocks and movement of the disrupted blocks away from each other okay so here option c is the right answer third one is what is the what is indicative of faulting repetition omission repetition and omission or the cracking this question is repeated we have in the previous video we have also discussed this question so let's 
revises revise it so that is the repetition and the omission when in the field the same layer or the rock is encountered more than once in a certain section this is known as the repetition in space faulting is indicated okay when the repetition of uh, blocks or the repetition of rock structures they repeat so they give rise to the repetition of structures and faulting is indicated similarly omission of certain bits in some directions as provided by thorough study of stratigraphy of the region they can also be indicative of the faulting system so repetition as well as omission these two are the key factors okay which indicate the faulting system fourth one is disruption of pits due to faulting results in their dot dot dash displacement settling uh, inclination or the change in their composition so what is given disruption of the bits due to the faulting results in their that is the displacement okay so displacement of the bits due to the faulting generally results in their displacement which may be determined in terms of slip separation or offset and gapping okay next one is what kind of evidence the physiographic features provide direct indirect certain or the uncertain so some physiographic features that may serve as indirect evidences of faulting among them the most important are the aligned springs and offset streams okay so the alignment of the springs and the offsetting of the stream so these are the indirect evidences for of the faulting okay the next one is the important physiographic evidences studied in aligned spring offsetting spring the mountain ranges or the uh, offset stream and the aligned spring so this question has been repeated as in the previous question we have also discussed it some physiographic features that may serve as indirect evidences of faulting so among them the most important one and you have to keep in mind these are two important factors that is the aligned alignment of the springs and the offsetting of the springs okay or the offsetting of streams so these are two very key factors for the physiographic evidences of faulting next one is the resistance to stresses of rocks depend upon the resistance of rocks the, the resistance of stresses of rock to that depends upon the cohesive strength only the internal friction only cohesive strength and internal friction or the hardness of the rock so that depends upon the cohesive strength as well as the internal friction ag acting against each one another each one another so any rock on on or below the uh, crust that may withstand all the operating stresses up to a limit okay after a limit they they bend ductilely or the brittleness so which depends upon its cohesiveness cohesive strength as well as the internal friction okay when internal friction uh, reaches that limit so they start bending or buckling okay so here option c the cohesive strength as well as the internal friction is the right answer next one is when are the normal stresses formed okay what are the conditions when the normal stresses are formed maximum stresses in horizontal direction maximum stresses in vertical direction maximum stress in inclined at certain angle to certain angle other than the right angle or the intermediate stress is vertical so we all have it's read it's read, uh, it's read about the stress field the normal stress as well as the shear stress so in highly over simplified situation the type of fault like likely to form is related to the stress field operating in a given area so thus talking in the terms of the three principal stresses normal faults would form when the maximum stress is vertical okay so this is the condition or the criteria for the 
normal stresses to form that the minimum stress should be vertical okay so that is the option b is the right answer ninth one is what is the assumed nature of the rock for the study isotropic anisotropic uniform or the non uniform so that is isotropic in all the idealized situations it is assumed that the rocks are in iso sorry, isotropic in character and the mohr coulomb law of rock failure holds good in those conditions when they are isotropic in nature okay mohr coulomb law of rock failure that is also very important law and we will discuss one in detail the descriptive type then we will detail talk about this mohr coulomb law of rock failure okay next one is what is the cause for compressive force vertical tension horizontal tension vertical compression or the shearing so that is the option b that is the horizontal tension so gravity or normal faults are believed to be caused under the influence of horizontal tension whereas thrust fault are the result of the compressive forces that may throw the rock into the severe type of folding before actual development of faults okay so the gravity or the normal faults they are generally believed to be caused under the influence of horizontal tension but if we talk about the thrust faults they are the result of the compressive forces that may throw the rocks into the severe type of folding before actually development of the faulting system or the faults so that is the option b horizontal tension next one is a fracture in a fracture is formed perpendicular to the axis plane of a fold so this statement is given here that a fracture is formed perpendicular to the axis plane of a fold so whether this option is true sorry given statement is true or false so that is false why because a fracture is formed parallel to the axis plane of a fold where the shearing strength of the bed is overcome by the shearing stresses responsible for the development of the fold okay so the given option is false here so this was our discussion about the recognition of fault or the some evidences of the faulting system okay so this is very important for you to just revise it and that can be fruitful or that can help you out in the exams okay thank you